Nobody has ever seen it. They've only heard it. All the accounts that they have told me lack detail. There is a nebulous atmosphere around the description. But there's one story that my mother told me. And it comes close to describing this phenomenon. They all say it was big though. They all say it was a giant. But they had to give it a name so as to understand it. And years later, that name found its place, describing radio. <laughs> they say that part of it was so sharp that it pierced the heart of the enemy and shook the enemy. Just the rumor of it shook the enemy and pierced the enemy that he got afraid. But there was also part of it that was an apparatus of care, an instrument of cleansing, of healing for the people. My mother describes the sounds and the voices that she heard.
She tells me that as they were walking in the night, she started hearing the voices of school, school children walking on her right hand side. But within that split second, she also heard those voices crawling on the back of the skin of her neck. Before even a second passed, she could hear their voices under her feet. The skin under her feet could hear the voices. She says she never heard it, she never saw it, but she heard it. But they all tell me that it is a giant phenomenon. Around 1975, my father was working in the mines in Shabani, digging out the gold for the colonizer. And they sent a radio broadcast looking for him because he was collaborating with the comrades. The colonial radio was so powerful that he was paralyzed with fear. He could not run. So he tells me that as he was sitting around the fire in the night, he was sitting on a wooden stool, and that stool made a sound because it was broken. And as he sat on that stool, he contemplated on his future that was coming to nothing very soon. And he tells me that at that very moment, the stool gave way to the weight of his body and he fell backwards into the bush covered by the darkness of the leaves. And at that very moment, the soldiers came in and called his name, but he was nowhere to be found. He was saved by a fall. Ah, ah, ah. 
Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe. Now I want to have a conversation with the soil, the land. I will speak to the soil. Trying to find out how such a conflicted space can hold itself together. They, they tell you that you are a map. That's what they tell you. But you are wrong. Yes, I said you are wrong. You are a geographical mistake. You were mapped all the way wrong. Just like Munster Sebastian in 1489 to Gerard Mercato in 1569, they were all wrong. Why do you allow others to define you? Why do you allow others to open up and draw lines around you? Say, go. Say, go. Say, go. Say, go. Say, go. Let me make you fearless. Let me make you formless. From Kariba to the Zambezi River, all the way to the Eastern Highlands in Mutare, Zishavane, Bulawayo. Harare, Gweru, let me make you formless, let me make you fearless, let me start you over again. Seiko, Seiko, 
You believe so much in lines, lines in the sand, in ethnicities, in boxes, in groups, in tribes. Say, hey, go, say, go. Say, go. Today, when I speak of these things, I am called a traitor. I don't understand how a voice that liberated the people a few years ago now silences the same people. voice is not so far away.
could not feel my own body. My voice was unrecognizable to me because of the struggle. And I counted the days, there were exactly 485 days of struggle. Struggling so much that I almost became invisible. But something in that struggle opened my eyes. I, it became so clear what was around me. My mind was clearer than usual. But how does a country of your own birth cause you so much pain? My mother tells me of a story when she was 13 years old. It was strange because in December it's not supposed to be cold, but it was a cold night. I was somewhere in the future. And 58 years later, I'm talking to you now through radio. About radio, wartime radio. This was a lonely voice speaking through the forests of Maputo, another one crying out through the treacherous terrains from Lusaka, Zambia, finding a place to land on the hearts of the people. The voice of revolution, the voice of Zimbabwe, calling the children from the dust to leave everything that they were doing to join Wanamkoma to fight the one without knees, Vasina Madhi. This was the voice of the people. This was the voice of revolution. It was born out of an oppression. When the people could not find an open voice, they turned to a guerrilla voice. Today, when the people cannot find an open trade, an open place to speak, to exchange, they find another place. They live through the cracks. Ah, the nature. Sororo. Zoro 
Hanun di da